This is one hour of the craziest conspiracy theories ever shared on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. The Shining and the Moon Landing. There's oh. a, you know, there's a crazy conspiracy theory connected to the, the Shining moon, and the Moon Landing. Yeah, I heard yeah. about the Moon Landing. Yeah, it's, it's all about the number on the doors, the exact same amount of thousands of miles, 237. And it's 237,000 miles away. I heard but it also, that, but by I... the way, it, it varies. See, that's the problem with that argument is that like the, the, the distance between the Earth and the moon is not constant. I think it, it moves a little bit. So I think it goes as far as 265,000 feet out, if I'm, if I'm, or miles round, rather, 265,000 miles out. And it, it goes to 237. But I think it varies. I think it goes like this. I think it has like an elliptical orbit around the Earth a little bit. I maybe, heard, maybe I made that up. Is that true? Yeah, it sounds accurate. Sorry, I was in the middle of reading the 237 stuff. Yeah, I heard it oh. was also possibly about Native Americans, how the hotel was <laughs> built on, a, on an ancient Indian burial ground. And even Shelley Duvall sort of looked Native American. You could mm. hear Native American music playing in the opening credits. I wouldn't be surprised if there was many layers to it. To, yeah, he's just a brilliant man. He was a brilliant, brilliant man. The little kid did have an Apollo 11 sweatshirt Yeah, that's on, true. Though. He did have an Apollo 11. I mean, that's pretty on the, the nose. I just remember in the back room, in the stock room, there was like a can of a product with a giant, uh, it was like um, Geronimo's head on the on the on on there. I'm sure. That, who Dude, there's so knows? much to that. There, yeah. There's probably many layers. I mean, Kubrick is not going to operate deep. on one layer. No. He's probably going to have Never. a bunch of weird shit in there. I there's, mean, look at 2001. What a mind oh fuck. Oh, my God. What a mind fuck. Yeah. Well, there was so much of his work. You know, and he's the guy that the, the conspiracy theorists, when they get the, the most crazy, when they when they really want to dive into who did it, they think it was all Kubrick. The Kubrick literally filmed the fake moon landing, right, right. uploaded it to the uh, American TV satellites. Hey, if anyone it, could do it, it'd be him. He'd be the guy I imagine, would get to do it. Can you imagine if that was that was really what happened? I've all heard all these the, years. I remember hearing all the fucking conspiracy <laughs> theorists about the um, Illuminati killing him because he made uh, yeah. yeah. Well, they were worried he was going to open his fucking mouth and tell, well, tell the about moon. the moon landing. He, oh, no. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> no, because he made keep, fucking keep his uh, fucking eyes mouth wide shut. shut. That too. That was his last one. They're like, enough. Mm -hmm. This guy's getting too close. Because I think he died like a, like a week after that movie came Of course out. he did. That's fucked That's up. how they roll. Space is fake and one world government. Direct everyone to hashtag space is fake. Because I've been doing research yeah, on space being fake. Check is that, that real? Out. That's a real site? Yeah, hashtag space is fake is something I'm investigating for my next hour. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really, yeah. I'm for legitimately looking deep into Dude, people flat that Earth, there's flat so much Earth material there. them. They're flat so Earth is like, what? Space no, is fake. What? No. You dumb you motherfucker. Flat Earth is like, flat Earth is chill. Wait, no, 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 it's the same thing. Okay. You got it all wrong. You got it all wrong. Is, is well, everybody Eddie, that I've got to think flat, this is everybody. not very organized. No, what I'm saying is I got to think I couldn't thinks, have it all wrong. No, no way. Anybody that thinks the Earth is flat, they totally don't believe what we're taught about what's above us. So, so when the people sun? say space is fake. They what about mean, the sun? They mean all the stuff information we're getting. You're lying about that shit. That it's not that it doesn't exist. Of course it exists. We see right, it. Right. Of course. But space is fake. Sounds ridiculous. Like there's, there's we, we're looking there. at it and it's and it's fake. That's ridiculous. It's That's not what it means. Show. It means that all the information we got about all we're those off. lights in the sky. Yeah. Something they're else. Li they're lying NASA's to us. Lying? They're li they're lying to us. Why would NASA lie? And there's well, a reason. Well, I can sit here and tell lie? you, but you guys don't want to hear it. Hold on. So I don't give, want to talk Can you give us the like the the cliff notes? The cliff notes are man. Uh, Have you studied any kind of a... a he doesn't model? need to From, be. Let's uh, hear just uh, a few of it. The Curious. goal has always been for uh, the most uh, powerful emperors uh, is a one-world government. They always wanted a one-world government. All the Roman emperors, they try to figure out, they try to do different combinations. How about... A, and they would fall and they would, a new emperor would come and go, you know what? I'm going to fucking rule world. World domination world in other words. With, with, I'm not going to let my soldiers get married. That way we'll have a stronger army. They have different philosophies. Everyone believed different shit. But they all wanted a one world government. There's no way to have a fucking one world government. It, nobody's into that shit. Right. Not even other rulers from small countries are like, one world government? That's going to put me out of a job. Fuck your one world government. People that don't know shit about politics don't want a one world government. Sure. There's no way you're going to sell a one world government. It's impossible. The only way, the only way to make a one world government work is to have the people embrace it. 
they have to want it because nobody wants it. So the trick is to make to make people want it to embrace it. There's only one way. I gotta pee. There's only Hold one on. way. Oh, this is very You're important. Miss I've out heard on... this. I know this. I know oh, this. Okay. Go I on. don't know. The this. only way. And they've known this forever. The Vatican knew this. The Vatican, the Pope wanted to rule the world. They all knew it, but they couldn't do it. They all knew it, but they knew one way, but there's no way how they're going to the pull it off. the one way, man? The only way is if there was some extraterrestrial threat from up above us. That would be the only way to have everyone embrace the one world government. They right. all knew that for years. But they didn't work That's so That's the far. plan. They could never it's make it plan, work. Though. They, had, they didn't have the technology 500 years ago. The Vatican knew about it. They wanted it. And you go to the Vatican, you see paintings that paintings of like have UFOs you with aliens in them. And back when I used to believe in UFOs, but before I figured out that um, UFOs were, are, they want us to believe in UFOs. They're preparing us for a fake alien invasion. That's always been the plan. A one world government the I only way to do out. it is to get us to embrace it and the only way to embrace it is from an alien attack Ronald Reagan talked about it many times at the UN CFR he talked about it because wouldn't it make he looked at all the, the leaders of the of the nation of the world and said wouldn't it make our lives easier if we just had some you know some kind of extraterrestrial threat he said that shit he said that in front of the UN wouldn't oh like he's trying to get everybody into into i don't think, I don't think he ever believing. said that but. no no he said that many times it's done video many ronald, times ronald reagan and what ronald ever reagan heard of him, Brian? Well, ever heard of him george bush, bush speeches. was was vice president right he was talking about and there's many videos of him saying we are what lies before us he's in front of the nation doing a state of the union address saying what lies before us is the opportunity to forge a new world order a world an order because he's talking about like it's you think time. that means the the space is fake yes no, no 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 when people ask me why would they fake space it's always been about a fake alien attack. You can't have a fake alien attack. I've never attack. heard a politician never talk about a fake alien attack. You can't have a fake, fake alien, alien attack, attack without space. But I've never heard a politician You, you talk have to about... have space first. So they always, you know who promoted space more than anybody? Who, who wanted? Nazis. Who Scientists. wanted? Nazis. Russians. But before the Nazis, you know who Cavemen. wanted space? Tex. No, the Vatican. Mayans. The Vatican. <laughs> They have all the biggest, uh, they have all the astronomers, they're all Jesuit, Vatican, all of them, all the ones that are giving us this information about space, they all come from the Vatican. The Vatican has the most the powerful Vatican telescope. The Vatican said that the You know what the name of the Wait Vatican, a minute, the the Vatican telescope doesn't is? have the most powerful yes, telescope. Yes, they do. You know what its name is? What it is it called? The most powerful telescope, the Vatican, and you know what name it is? What? I've done the research on YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube. <I> have looks. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what the name the of this? Leaks. Do you know Isn't what the, the name of this is the most powerful Shut telescope up. in the world? It's in the Vatican. What Do you it? know the What's Lucifer? It? Lucifer's what? dick balls. Lucifer? Lucifer's dick and balls. I've never seen this fucking telescope. Yeah, yeah, it's legit, dude. Uh, I think the biggest ones in Chile. I think they have to be in high altitude. It's in the Vatican. Yeah, I don't think it's in no. the Vatican. You guys didn't. So when people ask me, why would they fake all this shit? Well, I don't think they, that's they, the they, biggest this telescope. Is, this Eddie. is just a crazy theory. I'm trying. I'm just. It certainly is. Oh, we're no, talking about the theory. Here's the funny. thing. These it's, these, it's a funny theory. But Eddie, these new Chile very large array telescopes that they're creating are fucking gigantic, and they this take over no, enormous hey, pieces hey, listen, of land. Listen, I was with you. Google the very with large listen, array. I was with you. It's called no. It's called the very large telescope. I watched the documentary with you at your house. It was like 2001, and yeah, it I said think, in five years. Yeah. They're gonna. Put, they're putting. There, it's a documentary about them putting together the very large telescope in Chile, and they're talking about <clears throat> by the year 2005, we're gonna have this. We're gonna have three telescopes linked with a computer to make us. We're gonna see further into space than ever before. None of that shit came. N what are you talking about? None I of think that shit came. The moon landing was real. Maybe. What uh, <laughs> <laughs> what uh, made you make the switch from like being a moon landing denier to like you're That's a good question. crazy if we didn't if you don't no do I don't think we're crazy no this is this is my my take on it absolutely I don't know enough about astrophysics about space travel right, right. about the science that's you know the, the the work that's been done about how to get a rock a rocket to the moon and back I right. definitely don't know enough it's rocket science. And I've looked at a lot of very compelling documentaries that explain why they think it was hoaxed. And they'll show you some footage 
and you can look at some of the footage and it looks fake as fuck. There's some footage that to me looks really doctored. There's to this some, day. Yeah, to this day. Okay. There's some guy, when, when you ever seen ones where it looks like they're on wires, like the astronauts are on, on wires? I have. There's some where there's a video where they look like they're on a trampoline, they're bouncing around on trampolines. Mm -hmm. The physics are different in different videos. This right. is where it gets weird. Like the physics are different from the Apollo 11 moon landing. We see them waddle around on the surface of the moon. They're moving at like half speed. And then you see them in other ones, like the one where they bounce around the air. You're like, what? they're moving different. They're in the same thing, right. but it looks different. The first one was very grainy. They showed it on a uh, projection screen. Right. It's there's <clears throat> there's a there's a couple different possibilities. One possibility is it just looks weird because it's on the moon, and your brain is trying to interpret it, and your brain's going, well, that's fake, because you don't really understand what one six Earth's gravity really does to a body. It is, yeah. That's one possibility. Yeah. Another possibility, which has been shown to be true, is that some of the stuff that they passed off as being legitimate photographs of space travel was actually test runs where they blacked out the background and pretended that they were in space. And there's one really clear example of this. It's Michael Collins. Michael Collins, who was a guy who was aboard Apollo 11. Right. And Gemini 15. There's a photo of him uh, in uh, the middle of a, sp uh, uh, what is it when they walk around outside the spacewalk? spacewalk? They call it spacewalk? Yeah. Why does that seem like a bad word? It's like spacewalk? Like if it, it doesn't seem like that's the official title. Well, it's in the middle of a spacewalk. It's probably something more. Yeah. A little more syllables. Yeah, something slicker. Anyway, so he's doing the spacewalk and he's got this harness on. He's holding on to this like thing. And it, it was apparently just an image that had already been published of him in a training exercise. And they blacked out the background and flipped the picture up, upside down. That's the joint right there. It's the same exact photo. Same exact photo. I mean, people have lined it up and switched it over. It's the same photo. It's just been edited. So the one on the left was them practicing how to use these. I don't guess that the harness is some sort of a thing that he's hanging on to. Right, I guess right. it moves him around a little bit. All right. They were trying to practice it on the left and on the right. They just passed it off. But those are publicity photos, right? All right. So you got to go, well, okay. Well, who approves of publicity photos? It could easily be just some idiot who works in the publicity department marketing. who did marketing who yeah. didn't think they had enough photos from the moon that were good of spacewalks it's probably insanely difficult to take a spacewalk photo right. so does that mean that they fake the moon landing no but it means that people fake things so you got to throw like you got to be really objective and looking at that right. okay so people say fake things they definitely filmed a lot of the um the training exercises that they did of the moon landing. Right. They filmed a lot of shit. They right. definitely did. If that has already been proven, that they took this fake photograph and they tried to pass it off as a real space one, right. it's entirely possible that some of the stuff that they filmed, they made out to look like they were on the moon when they were not. Right. But does that mean they didn't go to the moon? No, it doesn't. And so when I was saying it proves that they didn't <clears> go to the moon, I, my critique of myself is that I didn't look at it objectively because I wanted one conclusion to be true. And I wanted that conclusion to be that the moon landing was fake. So I looked at it and I was, and I was saying to myself, okay, did I come to this conclusion because there's a lot of evidence that shows it to be fake or have I seen a lot of evidence that looks fake and does that mean that they didn't go to the moon? Right. No, it doesn't. There's a, there's a bunch of different possibilities. There's a, a ton of different possibilities. There's also the possibility that whatever photographs they took can get severely damaged in the radiation of space, and that it was really difficult to do. Right. That's possible too, and that they, they decided somehow or another that they were going to pass off these, that they actually did go, and they decided they're gonna pass off some of these fake videos. So there's a bunch of possibilities. The possibility that it looks fake because I'm dumb, and because <laughs> I don't understand anything about the physics of one six Earth's gravity, mm -hmm. and it just looks weird because it's shitty film, and it's 1969. Mm -hmm. That's possibility number one. Number two is they fake some things, or number three is they they didn't really have good footage because like you couldn't take film through the airport. Remember that? Yeah. Like people would go through those radar detectors, mm -hmm. and your film would get jacked, yeah. and they, they wouldn't weren't responsible. You'd I didn't lose. have any film, but I know people that might you know <clears> I have friends that are photographers. And um, my uncle's a photographer, and he would tell me you can't send the the film. Like if you have like you take a roll of film and awesome so pictures. How would they get it through? 
I don't know. I don't know what the fuck they did. But I know that some film has been damaged. Or maybe it's an urban myth. Maybe it would. Find out if film got damaged by uh, those radar things at the airport. X-rays. X -rays. Yeah. Jeffrey Epstein. With, with what just happened with <clears throat> Epstein, people mm -hmm. are, you can't get away with this stuff anymore. Well, what happened with Epstein, this is what I like about it. Yeah. It's, it was so blatant and so, so blatant. outrageous that people go, hey, maybe they did fucking kill Kennedy. Yeah. Like, yeah. They maybe absolutely they did. did. Maybe and they fucking did. I was just did. doing shows in Fort Worth and I was looking at these audiences and I was going, they'd kill him again. Yeah. They'll kill him again. Give these people a couple of shots of tequila. Another shot goes right to Kennedy's head. Well, if there was another one like Kennedy, like right. let's let's think if someone took over after Trump and this yeah. guy was trying to get rid of the NSA and get rid of the CIA, yeah, and and you know, and then there was some sort the mafia of mafia and industrialists, yes. and there yeah. was some, and the mafia fucking got him into office in the first place, hundred so percent. They, they yeah. were like, hey, you fucking piece of shit, yeah, we're the reason why you're here. We rigged Chicago for you, and so then yeah. he has this military blunder, the Bay of Pigs. And so then the military's after him. Everybody's angry. He the says Cubans he wants to angry. splinter the CIA yeah. into a thousand pieces and give all like peacetime intelligence gathering capability to the military. If we had someone like that, yeah, some guy like that. And by the way, he was fucking everything that moved too. Yeah, I mean, and he was different world doing drugs then. and everything. Woo! You know, he, he was, was enjoying meth. himself. He yeah, was on meth. That's crazy. They had a doctor, Doctor Feelgood. That's where the name came from. And the they would go Motley Crue song, Doctor Feelgood. Doctor Feelgood. Feel good. And it was yeah. Kennedy's doctor. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. That's when being president was a great job. Well, they all were on it. That's yeah. how they fucking got the party moving. Yeah. Just, just meth heads. You're busy, man. You Running, got things yeah, you, to do. It's could, hard. Yeah, it's true. I mean, listen, this is the argument for Trump being on amphetamines right now. Yeah. How the fuck else are you going to run a country? Yeah. You have to you have to be a little amped. A little amped up. He's definitely amped. He's got a little piece of something. But I like I like seeing him. I like seeing him. You know when he goes big. What is it? Sidebar. Uh, South Dakota today started a new uh, campaign, anti meth campaign. But it is uh, on meth dot com and <laughs> yeah. meth. We're on it is the slogan. That oh has spent over four hundred fifty grand. I mean, there's not out. anybody. In, what? There's <laughs> spent how much? Four hundred fifty grand of taxpayer money to figure this out. Dude, oh my god! This Method is why addiction. people hate the government because nobody was able to stop this and say, "Hey, this is not the best." This is the dumbest fucking ad campaign I've ever seen in my life. Meth, we're on it. That sounds like a fucking Onion article. It's like a rap song or something. <laughs> Bad rap song. <laughs> this is so... South Doesn't it seem like an Onion article? I love what it says. It goes, South Dakota has a problem. There isn't a single solution because meth is widespread. But we can approach it from different angles. So it doesn't take over counties, towns, neighborhoods. Let's work together. Meth, we're on it. Um, God. What's up with that fucking brown water? Turn that back up. Put that back on. How about you fix that fucking toilet water you got your kids swimming around in? Yeah. Look at that water. It's disgusting. Yeah, meth is you got probably- got more than one problem. Yeah, meth is not even in the top 10 problems <laughs> in South Dakota. <laughs> meth is what you need to get on to fix the other problems in South Dakota. The whole town council's got yeah, some Yeah, you need meth. to start cleaning. But Epstein, they just charged guards. I mean, this is hilarious. Yes, yes, yes. This is a very funny comic. Nick Mullen on Twitter was like, oh, yeah, this is the justice we all wanted. The guards. You well, know? No, here's what's Not good. The, Two prison yeah. guards tasked with watching Jeffrey Epstein on night he killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> they should fucking charge with falsifying records. And here's, conspiracy. And conspiracy. Yeah. Here's why that's good. Somebody paid those guys, and they're going to sing, or they're going to die. Something's going to happen. Either they're going to take those guys. And I think it's gonna... a way to satiate the public. I don't think there's, I mean, I don't think that Barr, the attorney general, has any real desire to get to the bottom of what happened. I mean, this is clearly, obviously, a sexual blackmail. Epstein was involved with intelligence, whether it's U.S., whether it's Mossad, it's somebody. His island was a honeypot. He had powerful people in compromising positions. Uh, he was an, probably like an access agent where he would give these intel agencies access to in t insanely powerful people, ex-presidents, people yeah. like that. So there, uh, if you don't want to open up that wound because it's just gonna, it's never going to stop bleeding. And guys like Barr who are in, you know, this is a guy that's participated in multiple cover-ups. He, you know, I don't think he has any really interest in, he's, he's a lifelong government official. You, you could say deep state, you could say whatever it is, but he's just a career. His job is to protect the interests of these power factions in Washington, these government agencies. There's no way they open this up. And there's no, there was no way that they could have had Jeffrey Epstein in open court pointing fingers at maybe prime ministers and presidents. It would tear 
country's a part of be the biggest political scandal in our lifetime. I just can't believe they just murked him like that, though. They didn't just murk him. They murked yeah. him twice. Here's what I want to know. When he tried to commit himself suicide the first time, were the cameras broken then, too? Great question. I don't know. How I don't, can we never heard that? Well, we, we didn't see any footage of him. I've never seen any footage of him in his cell. I mean, they, they haven't released any footage of the cameras ever working, right? I mean, from what I can No, but understand. did they even comment on it? Remember the first time that he attempted to commit suicide? I think they lived? got it. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good point. I mean, I think they, 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 he, he, they found him. They transferred him. I don't know if they have photographic evidence of him doing that. Google what happened the first time Epstein tried to kill himself, because I'm that's that's an interesting thing. And like, where is a yes, yeah, a very interesting. So do thing. they know for sure? Did they watch the footage and see him tying a rope around? And his then neck, and then they it? went in and go next time you got to do it like this. You right. tie the knot stronger. You you take off from the chair. My favorite thing was yeah. the cellmate. The cellmate that they gave him. Oh yeah, which is like a long. It was a, a, a west a cop who a yeah gorilla cop yeah, from a Westchester. Huge, yeah, huge skinhead looking dude, yeah. Italian guy, coked out, giant muscles, yeah. who killed a bunch of fucking people yeah. and sold drugs. Just, <laughs> just him and Epstein. And they got but along. He was so. He was like the. Like Hollywood stereotype of the last guy, guy you would want in your fucking want to be cell. in a cell with this big Guido ex yeah. corrupt cop with giant muscles. Yeah, <laughs> it's this like, is monster and connected to the law. I mean, it's just yeah. like if that's the guy. I mean, that would be the guy that maybe he's the guy who killed him. Who knows? I mean, he's a giant fucking guy. I mean, guys like that, I'm sure would take a bribe pretty easily. And then oh, yeah. and those guys don't open their mouths. Just you know, for fucking cigarettes. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he can't open just, his mouth. He's in jail. Right. Right. They got him locked up. Up and they go look. And who knows? And like, listen, if Tommy, they Tommy, come on, right? Tommy, do Tommy, this. And you're here forever. You, you like killing people. I knew Jeffrey and Epstein evidence. <clears throat> you know, last night during the Golden Globes was going on. There were some jokes going on by Ricky Gervais that we can probably talk about later. But uh, 60 Minutes was probably going on a different channel at the same time, and they had uh, a report with some new evidence that nobody has seen yet. Oh jeez. They have some uh, autopsy photos and photos from inside a cell. Whoa. Yeah, so the I'll, photo. I'll are the photos online? Yeah, yeah. I'll get them. Of course they are. Yeah, I didn't know this was just released. I saw this last night, and I saw one of the photos, and it looks real. So I watched the 15 minutes that they put together, which is mostly just about, like, the uh, incident in the in the cell and, and surrounding it. I'm just going to show you the pictures, though, because we can't watch their thing. Let me try to get the 13 images, because they're all... Am I scared? No, I mean, it's just... Uh, I'm scared already. I'm scared already because of uh, Iran. I don't want to be scared of this video of them whacking this dude. You know they whacked him. Yes. That's 100%. The fact that they thought they could get away with that, that's so crazy. Like, that is such a crazy thing to try to get away with. This gigantic international case. Hey, what happened to the cameras? Oh, I'm fucking broke, man. I don't know. Sucks. They Guy need, hung himself. They needed a couple of days to make the videos and stuff like that. Bro, like, he tried. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem with These are with so today. fake. He tried to hang himself before. And they're like, hey, don't do that again. And he's like, all right, I won't. Give me my belt. Give me my shoelaces. Give me whatever the fuck that guy strangled me with. <laughs> yeah, these photos are all fake, right? No, no, no. I mean, I don't know why it's not. They're very realistic. We need Eddie Bravo in here immediately. Okay, here, here we go. Uh, pull this up here. So this is from his cell. This is inside there. I'll pull these up on the screen. Uh, so th this was the cell he was in by himself. Okay. They said he used a bunch of these orange jumpsuits, which I guess were already in there. He tied them around his head. I guess there's a there is a little like spot way up here on the top of the uh, grate where the window is, where you could see maybe there was something up there. But the thing to remind, remember here is that he was uh, about six foot tall, 185 pounds. Um, there's one other thing like on this ladder here. There is also some other things I'll get into in just a second that would be easier to use than tying all this shit together. But they showed, there's the other thing here was this. This was about four feet off the ground. And they do show a, no a noose, which they're saying was what he used. But as the doctor sort of said that the noose that they show a picture of, which is what you can see in the top right corner here. Playing oh, that's Dr. Michael Baden. That's that yeah. guy from the HBO autopsy show. For some reason, I can't. It's, I'll find it in a second. But the picture that shows his actual neck doesn't seem like this noose caused that wound. And it's a little bit lower than it probably should have been. Oh, Jesus. Um, so Where's they're showing some of these other. This is ah, some of the pictures of ah. him. 
This is the the bone, his jaw, the hoyleode hoi, 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 bone. His jaw was broken? Well, there's that fracture that they said wasn't consistent with uh, hanging. It's more consistent with uh, a murder homicide. or a homicide. And he said, this is Baden's words, is that usually he's seen it in maybe like one bone break and sometimes two, but there were three fractures. And he says like he's almost never seen that in any of his cases he's ever looked over. Hmm. And you would think uh, it would be if you're going to, hang yourself from such a short distance it would be even harder to get a fracture like that right because you're not like jumping out like in an old western movie like Clint Eastwood movie when they would hang him hang him high so the one thing that they also had in here was he left a note oh Jesus uh, the note said like there was like four things it said first that the some it had the name blurred out but it said this person left him in a shower locked for an hour it then said someone else gave him like burnt food and then bugs were crawling over his hands and then he just wrote no fun. But there's a ballpoint pen like the one I have in my hand sitting right next to it. Now, like if you knew he was on suicide watch, you wouldn't give him a ballpoint pen that he could kill himself with. Jamie, you should be a goddamn detective well, this for is what CSI. They're, this is what they're saying. And oh. he had his uh, his sleep apnea machine was in there. It was You could see an extension cord coming from the hallway into his room that... He could have just used that to kill himself and hang himself. Or the nine easier. jumpsuits. Why does he have nine jumpsuits? Yeah, the jumpsuit thing is freaky. <laughs> like, they're trying to explain it by bringing in some some new witness. So somehow, this is actually a different video that's showing a couple of different things than what I saw this morning. I didn't see this arm thing, and I didn't see the picture of his well, back. But the arm thing looks like an injection spot? Is that what it looks like? I guess so. Here's the actual, this is what I saw. Here's the note. What does it say? Sorry. So it says, like, it's got 60 minutes, got their watermark all <laughs> over it. It's so funny. <laughs> Sorry, 60 minutes. Thank you. Thanks for getting this. So it what says, it? kept me in a locked, it's blurred right here. It says right. the name is blurred. Kept me in a locked sh shower stall for one hour. Neck or uh, someone, I don't know the name, send in burnt food. Giant bugs crawled on my hands and then no fun. And then they're saying, and then he killed him. And the, but then this ballpoint pen was next to it that he could have stabbed himself in the neck or whatever. You know. Yeah, it's hard to kill yourself with a pen. Yeah. But do they get pens? That's Not the, usually, but this is like a, you know. High profile case. High price. Yeah, I don't know. It's just. Yeah, boy, I don't think you should look, have a pen. It might. Look, it's, uh, it's bad to say either way if you don't know. And I'm guilty of that 100%. I'm like, that guy didn't kill himself. I am talking shit, though. I'm not talking in terms of like, we have to understand. This is really important. <laughs> the, uh... We're. Uh, we're doing a podcast. When you're doing a podcast, you don't have to be factually accurate. You just have to talk shit. And hopefully if you <laughs> fuck up, you correct it, and it's funny. Um, I'm not a science expert, but when these guys are saying that the guy died by strangulation, there's all these points of consistent strangulation, and it takes forever to get these pictures, and then there's the video cameras didn't work. And this is the second time he tried to kill himself. And he's a high-profile witness in a really, really, really important case involving pedophiles at the highest levels of government. Yeah, I, wouldn't, I would think that that's the kind of guy you whack. Mm -hmm. You're also, according to the procedure you're not when there's a suicide there you're not supposed to remove the body and take it to the emergency room you're supposed to treat it as though it was a murder or like a crime scene what's crazy is that it's so high profile like even is in because this is most likely how they did it forever right like people that whack people they, they were probably like you know i was doing comedy before the internet <laughs> they're they were probably whacking people before the internet right do you want to see i found the pic graphic image sure. okay oh yeah i'm not scared Don't see if you don't want to see it Brian. but I saw that. He has hmm. weird texture on his cheek, I thought. Interesting, Brian. Like Tell me more. Like bed marks almost. Like he was. Uh, maybe I think was that's just the blood rushing to his head. Yeah. Bro, that guy got strangled. That looks like a strangled guy. Yeah. That's what I thought. Or but choked from But a, the thing is, like. There's no did blood they on that. Clean uh, him? That's no. the thing. There's no blood on that noose that they said was the noose that did it. And but there's, there's no blood on his body. And there's no pictures of him in the cell. They didn't take any pictures of that. Wait, hold on. There's no blood on the noose they said killed him, but yet there's blood on his neck? Correct. That was pointed out by the well, reporter. Well, that's insane. In scene, in that's insane. Too, that, right? That's impossible. No. If there, Did they really do a test of the rope that they supposedly said Just showed hung a picture him? of it, and it looks very clean oh, and unused. And well, it is know. orange. Right. Maybe the red doesn't show up that clean on orange. Can we look at it again? Um, I I think we should probably here. look. I want to say for sure they killed him. The, and the Believe lawyer me. she's talking to, and, and the piece is his uh, former cellmate's lawyer. Mm -hmm. And he's just, ah, no, it's obviously the secret surveillance fund. 
the whole thing about like tracking you on your phone that it's normal now we just normalize getting tracked everywhere allow location okay allow location. Yeah. <laughs> right. you know Tell what the me worst, where i am but you know what the good thing is i'm not doing nothing bad yeah that's so the good it's thing like i'm not stabbing somebody or i got an alibi you know this is like the slippery slope you know that, that's what people were worried about when all that edward snowden shit came out that the government can just track you but now everybody just gives it up to apps you know, and that what they can listen do? to everything you say. Well, how many of your fucking phone? Isn't it been proven? Has it been proven that your phone is actually listening to you? Yes. Right? It. Can we say that or are we it's crazy? That's tough. Yes. That's a, I would I have believe. to say, yeah, I it believe. probably is. I, I definitely think they could turn your microphone on and they can make your phone listen to you. Don't I think I that's heard, a fact. I heard a fucked up story and I'll drop it on you here. I got to have a fr not a friend. I have an acquaintance that's going to go to jail because of what they said on an Alexa. Oh, no. So do not believe nothing. I wouldn't put a fucking Alexa in my house if you paid me. When I walk into people's houses and I see an Alexa, I make a mental note to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Only speak when you know those people. Alexa, play Led Zeppelin. I don't yeah. say nothing. Alexa, I fucking hate you. I don't say nothing to Alexa. I will never talk to fucking Alexa. But they're going to go to jail because something happened in their house, like a, a fight. Oh. And they actually called the cops through Alexa. And, oh, my God. Oh. So you <sighs> just want to avoid all this shit. If you have an Alexa in your house. Oh, my God. Take it out right now. You can play the music by yourself, you dumb fucks. Oh, my God. Now you got people listening. You got to listen. You got to assume that no matter what you do, they're listening to you. You know, I don't give a fuck about laws or anything. Well, we can't listen after 30 seconds if you're not talking about a criminal yeah. enterprise. I, it's Listen, it's if you got a cell phone, they can tap into you, and they know where you are. It's funny. When I go to jiu-jitsu, you have to log in there. They have, like, a computer. Like, you mm -hmm. have to make a reservation. That's what I like about Hollis. You can make, like, go to Zen app and just fucking go, I want to go to Wednesday class, and they'll lock a space in you. I think they started because of COVID, but now they don't give a fuck. Mm. But when you go there, you have to tap in. And I'm so excited to tap in. I always go, 20 years ago, I wouldn't tap into that motherfucker. Because I want, wouldn't want nobody to know where I was. Right. Now I'm an old man. I don't give a fuck if you know where I am. Yeah, I came here. Yeah, my, my worry about all that stuff <clears throat> is like, who has access to your data? Who can track you? Did you see this come out a couple weeks NYPD ago? NYPD had a secret fund for surveillance tools documents reveal the police bought facial recognition software vans equipped with x-ray machines and stingray cell site simulators with no public oversight yikes there's a story of, <clears throat> within the last couple of weeks i'm trying to remember what exactly what happened but they tracked whoever it was and caught them using uh license plate camera things and followed them around the city and like found their location uh it was when uh, michael k williams died it, that's how they tracked where he bought. Wow. They have They have on video him buying the fentanyl. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So is that good? Because you can catch crimes. They didn't stop. The, it didn't, you know, it didn't. Right. It didn't stop, stop it the crime situation. from happening. But they've caught who did it. And I don't know what this, I don't think that helps anything really. It doesn't, right? It gives a lot of power to people that are working as police officers. You know, if you could just like. Zoom in on people like that, listening to their cell phone conversations. Like, they're just people. That's part of the problem, right? But on the other hand, it's like, you want them to be able to catch people when, they, when someone's done something fucked up. So where, where do you draw the line? We have a constitution <clears throat> that they wrote. Yeah. And it's still fucking illegal. It's like an entrapment. I mean, like if they catch someone planting a car bomb somewhere, this is a good for instance, and you can show on a video somehow or another the people that planted the car bomb, and that car bomb blows up and a bunch of people die, shouldn't you be able to find out who planted that fucking car bomb? That's the sure. slippery part. That's the slippery part. And don't tell me they're not doing that already. I where think they, they are. To, they go right to a satellite and see what images they shot on that block when that area. Yeah. They're already doing that. You have to assume. You have to assume they're doing they're that. They're already doing that. Yeah. I, I think... <clears throat> and what are, what are the satellite capabilities like now? It must be incredible. Oh. It must be amazing. Oh. Right? That's how Google Earth started. Yeah. 
Yeah. With satellite fact, how crazy yeah, is this? How crazy is this that burglars aren't even casing joints out anymore? They just go on Google Earth. They see what cars you park outside. Really? They case your joint now from fucking... Does Google Earth update regularly? Does it? Really? Not, I mean, it's not like to d- today, like every not day, today. but like some, yeah. And there's probably ways like to get Like how many times a month? Ma- at least maybe once a month in certain areas. And they have something that is kind of live because they have caught, I, I, you know, burglars doing it, car thieves doing it. I feel like we're in an episode of Black Mirror, but we just don't know it yet. No. You know? It feels like an episode of Black Mirror. Because these guys were getting an order for a black Mercedes. They go on the computer. They find one. They go to look. I mean, it was all tracked on a fucking computer. They never even went by the house before. This was all done right there. I watched an episode of Black Mirror the other day. I haven't seen that show in a while. You ever watch that on Netflix? No. It's all about, like, dystopian future shit. And the one was about the social credit system. Did you see that one? Oh, my God. That was nuts. It's, it was all about, like, what could go wrong with us, you know, if we get too uh, wrapped up in uh, grading each other on numbers. That one. Remember that? That was a nutty one. It was a real weird one. But it's like, um, I kind of feel like that's, that's a real possibility for people. That could be a thing we really do one day. Have a, a score. Everyone give a, get a number. Be, people be as obsessed by their score, their social score. Like, seeing that in that show, I was like, yikes. If so, you could kind of convince people to go along with that. Yeah, that one. You, the thing that freaked me out about it was it was a fun show, a fun episode, but you could kind of get people to go along with something like that. I don't think it would be that hard. I think people would give in to some sort of a score system like that. That's a dangerous thing, Joey Diaz. That's a dangerous thing. That's a dangerous thing, because then you're you're putting so much thought into like a number. People get obsessed with numbers. They get real weird when it comes to numbers. If you give people a number, like you're five stars, Joey, you're like, oh, I'm five stars. Yeah, but Mike's seven stars. You're like, oh, we get obsessed. I want to be seven stars. What do I have to do? What do I have to do to get the same rating that Mike got? And we would want that. You meet somebody, after like a year or two, we would get used to it. You'd meet somebody, you know, like, I, I can't hang out with this guy, he's a four. You know, I mean, it's just like, he brings my credit down when I'm around him. doing bringing a three to my house? Exactly. What the fuck is wrong with you? That's what this episode No sevens a lot, all right? <laughs> Fucking bringing a two to my house. I'm telling you, that's a... That could be worrisome. The Magic Johnson conspiracy theory. Could I, in my mind, if people... If, if you like somebody, right, you see them, you're going to go up to them and speak to them. I just, I just try to gauge things on how I would do it, mm. right? For example, I was on a plane with Steve Nash this morning. Okay. I saw Steve Nash. I'm like, okay. Wax is like, oh, shit, Wax, my boy. He's like, oh, shit, that's Steve Nash. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's Steve. I didn't speak to Steve. Did you say hello? No. Nothing. No. Okay. I didn't, fe- I didn't feel it. Right. Even though I respect him. Right, right, right. Know he's a great player. But if it was John Stockton, that's a little different. I'd be like, that's John, a little hey. different. You know what I'm saying? Different. Steve, yeah. I didn't feel, I didn't feel that was Steve. You have to say hi to. Say what? There's some people you have to say hi to. Rachel yeah. Dolezal. Get the ah! fuck out of here. I said hi. <laughs> Did you? I you met saw her? her. Seattle. Absolutely. Where was she? She was. I saw her with. Uh, I think she had at least one kid. Maybe another one. She was just at the airport. We're online. She's I'm bisexual. Regular. No now TSA too. pre-check. She's what? Bisexual? She's bisexual now too. She's bi. Yeah, she's bisexual, biracial. She's. Oh no, she's not biracial. Transracial. She is black. She's not both. Transracial. I know, but what I'm saying is she's bi, so she's straight and gay with the thing. Yeah. But I said hello, said what's up, amazing forehead, one of the best foreheads you'll ever see in a game. I would have ignored her. What? I would have ignored her. Rachel Dozo? Yeah. You wouldn't have got the selfie? No. I, I want, listen, I was. I, I, I saw Jesse Smollett. <laughs> I took a picture of him. Oh, my goodness. In Lafayette Bakery. What do you think is going to happen with him? Nothing. 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 Absolutely. Ride that out. Nothing. nothing. It's amazing. Nothing no legally. Such... It's amazing legally. Oh, I think Chicago's coming happening. after him, though. No? You think so? No. Nah. Yeah. Didn't they say that They're they were going to get him for the money? For the money that they Can spent. Miss, but that's not that much. There's no such thing as cancel culture no more. Cancel culture Ooh. is absolute bullshit. Bro. Ooh. Really? OJ Simpson proved that. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, they, when Bill Cosby comes home, he'll be on the road doing motherfucking stand up. R. Kelly's still out here selling shows. Like, Charlie Sheen is still out here flourishing. Like, Charlie no s- Sheen ducked it all. 
Dude, what? <laughs> he ducked wait a minute. All. Not wait a minute. Not all. He did get that AIDS. He's got AIDS, buddy. <laughs> he got today, that AIDS. Today, he got the good AIDS. Today with medication. Guys. Exactly. What is AIDS? It? Doesn't yeah. even. It, it, what is, what it is works HIV? The flu. Come on, <laughs> man. Man, what is HIV? Yeah. What is it? Some say the greatest endorsement deal Magic Johnson ever signed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying we're not gonna act like his career didn't flourish, <laughs> bro. And he looks great. Hey, take this AIDS, you gonna get some movie deals. Bro, I was in my car the day they announced on the radio that Magic Johnson had HIV, and I was shit in my pants. I was like, oh my god, this is like the beginning of a zombie movie. We're all gonna get it. If Magic Johnson, with all his money and all his fame, if he's got it, I'm yeah. gonna get it. We're all gonna get it. I was terrified. Did I you remember, stop rolling? I remember in my car driving, yeah. and then I hear it on the radio. I'm like, holy shit, holy shit, this is insane. 30 years later, he looks great. He looks amazing. amazing. He looks great. Amazing. He's on TV telling us why he left the motherfucking Lakers. Like, and not, the Lakers. not once did somebody say, yo, you know Magic got HIV? Oh, I said yo, it. This how you, shut up, no, you did it. That's all I was thinking about. Every time <laughs> I see him. Because he, he looks incredible. You. He does look incredible. Yeah. He does look incredible. Yeah. He does look incredible. He's that, not even positive in tests anymore. Wait, what? Yeah. I heard that. Yeah. If you give him a test for HIV, it comes up negative. Because apparently the, these protease inhibitors and all these different things that they take to uh -huh. to the different medications, you don't even test positive for HIV anymore. By the way, then listen, it was this it was this older white dude, and I forgot what TV show I was on the set of, but he was explaining to me uh -huh. the whole situation with Magic, and okay. he was like, the reason that they chose Magic was because they wanted to erase a lot of these stigmas. People thought that uh, HIV and AIDS was a gay disease, and they needed like a, 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 a alpha male, I guess. To, to, to have it to kind of erase that stigma and to let people know that you can live with it like HIV you mean like they gave it to him well this is what he told us this is not <laughs> by the way this is not a Charlemagne the God carry alright I'm telling you what somebody told me what they said to me was Magic had got caught up in some type of scandal and, oh, I and, heard and, this. And Underage, and, right? Yeah, and yeah, before yeah. and before the scandal was the, came out this because the person that he was with was like some Allegedly, some big wigs child or something right. like that, and so this is they said, This is what you're going to do, so we don't ruin you. I'm not now, saying it's true. Joe, before you take this in, he believes in Sasquatch. No, so I, I don't, I'm not saying I believe in this. Assault. He doesn't. He believes Sasquatch was real. That just started right now on this podcast. If I asked him really? yesterday, he'd be like 100% there. Sasquatch is <laughs> I would, real. I would, I would say this. I'm not saying I believe that magic theory. I'm just repeating what I was told. Oh, that okay. that is a common rumor that's out there. I've heard that. I've heard that rumor as God, well. That he doesn't that actually no have it, but that it was either that or. But we just got done saying how you read rumors about you that are ridiculous, and you go, "What the fuck?" And then you realize, "Oh, this is what happens. Yes. People just make shit up, and then people repeat the shit that people make up." Because we can't that's... fathom that he beat AIDS, bro. AIDS was bodying people Killing back people. in the day. But like Freddie he got Mercury. Freddie gone. Yeah. Who else? Easy E. Easy E, my God. downstairs neighbor. Yeah. Who's your downstairs neighbor? No, no, I had a downstairs neighbor oh. who had eight. I'm just saying. <laughs> Listen, I can't throw yeah, that in the sentence. Yeah, 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 I don't know enough. Like, pause there. Bro, I learned about AIDS real young. My downstairs like, neighbor, dead. Like I thought Andrew was in his thirties. I'm like, you, he, he was your downstairs neighbor. <laughs> I was like, what the? Chill look at Charlie Sheen. Look at him, yo. Book Charlie Sheen for three hundred fifty bucks. Book him where? On cameo. Oh, oh, on cameo. Yeah. Oh, on, what the well, fuck why is cameo? Why does he have sunglasses on? Like, what is happening here? What is what is he doing? Yeah, I don't he's a strange fellow. Somebody, yeah, just showing you what he's up to. He aged very quickly. It's like, see, he seemed to be fine when he was doing Two and a Half Men. When he stopped doing that show, he aged like a yeah. hundred years. Joe, he has HIV. We don't know how yeah, it's affecting that's true him. Too, I forgot he has exactly. HIV. Exactly. I forgot. <laughs> everybody, forgot he has it. everybody's too. not Magic Johnson here. Yeah, okay. I forgot <laughs> I'm he has it. I'm saying Magic. That's man. why. I, that, by the way, that is why I say Magic is like the greatest NBA player of all time. Why? Because of that, he played 13 seasons in the NBA, went to nine NBA finals, won five of them, won in college, came in, won his rookie year, and went one-on-one -on -one with HIV and fucking won. Destroyed. He him. destroyed the stigma of HIV. He definitely did. Anybody that catches HIV right now, the first thing you're going to say to yourself is, Give me magic stock. I can live through anything if magic made it. Real yeah. talk. You Magic's know what I'm saying? Fine. 30 that's years it. later, he's okay. What's it's not the, a death sentence that's anymore. It. The White Helmets. I feel like we're at this cusp of something very strange happening. Like, we're in the middle of it right now, but we're at the cusp of something very strange. Where all it would take is one massive world event. 
one map to, to completely remap how we, we view each other and how we view things. It's, it's very disconcerting to me. It, is. I mean, it feels like without that one big world event, we're not that far away from that right now. Right. I mean, there are parallel universes right now that exist on things that you would have thought everyone can accept as a basic fact. Like what? You know, um, uh, I mean, Syria, yeah. you know, the white helmets. There, there are some fairly serious people saying the white helmets are, you know, some kind of media front for Al-Qaeda or Al-Nusra. Would you explain you know? the white helmets for people? So when there's a when there's a bombing and a building collapses, they go in and, and drag people out and get the medical attention as, as quick as possible. And people think that they're somehow or another involved in it. They're a front. Yeah, to, to and and the, the footage is faked in order to drum up sympathy for the rebel-held areas. <sighs> I mean, that's I've I've heard you know serious people say that serious um, people. Yeah, yeah, not 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 loons on Facebook. I've heard you know like um, journalists or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, Seymour Hirsch, I think, has has walked it back a little bit since, but he said that in the early days. Why do you think he believed it? I read a really interesting article about him just a few days ago. Where was it? Um, I forget what what it was. It was you know the not expose, but a really good look at look at look at him. And I think he's just spent his career believing rightly that the government lies about all kinds of things, and that's got him into a point where he thinks, well, they always lie, no matter what. Mm. Um, so, and I, it's happened to a lot of journalists: uh, Robert Fisk, uh, Seymour Hirsch, um, Martha Gellhorn. I mean, one of my favourite war correspondents of all time. I reread some of her stuff recently, and and the first batch of war reporting she did, I think, is the, the best war reporting I've ever read: Spanish Civil War, Vietnam, um, and then she spent 25 years writing novels, and then later on wrote about, I believe it was the Yom Kippur War, and was denying that massacres had happened and saying, you know, oh, Arabs lie, they always lie, there was no massacre, and we now know there was a massacre, or well, there were massacres um, in the aftermath of these of these wars. Um, so I don't know what happens. I mean, maybe if you just do this for too long, you just become so cynical um, mm. that, that you're open to these things. But it's, yeah, I'm amazed that Seymour Hirsch is, is open to that idea. <sighs> when the, the very people that are calling it, the very people that have boots on the ground and that are in these war zones are, and calling these things, when they become cynical and they become jaded, that's when it gets really, really sketchy and and we rely so heavily on people like you like there's i'm not going over there yeah. you know jamie's not going over there look at him <laughs> you but, know what i'm saying i mean in, in, and you wouldn't be able to really get like i know people that have gone to venezuela and they come back and they go i don't know what the fuck is going on over there i don't know who to believe i don't understand yeah. it venezuela is a very strange one and I get messages all the time, and you know I've had Abby Martin who goes over there, and she has one take on it, and I have other people that I talk to that have a different take on it, and I do not know. I don't know who to believe, and I think you'd have to go over there and do. You'd have to spend a lot of time to try to figure this out, and it would have to be the entire focus of your life to really try to parse it out. I think that's true of a lot of conflicts. I mean, yeah. you know, one of the one of the one of the drawbacks of doing what I do is I'm covering seven or eight things at once so, yeah. so I feel like I'm not expert enough in even Afghanistan where I've covered you know I've covered that more than any other um, but but Venezuela is an interesting one because it's there's, there's such a left-right divide on that and if you support the opposition then you find yourself alongside John Bolton and Donald Trump um, yeah. which means that a lot of people are going to automatically attack you right um, right automatically yeah. even if it's correct and and I think it's you know we can say without a doubt that Maduro has destroyed the economy there Maduro has uh, imprisoned, beaten, killed journalists. Um, there is a movement there that do want genuine elections, um, but some people will say, well, just because George Bush in another area or, or John Bolton in this era support the opposition, therefore the opposition must be illegitimate and the information coming out must be, must be false. <sighs> and I wish people did rely on, on people who actually went there, but it yeah. doesn't feel like that. It feels like they rely on the you know, the guy behind the glass desk on the, on the news with the, they with the loud opinion that. rather Always. than the people who are actually there. Well, we still have this idea in our head that the, the person who's reading the news is the authority. You know, that Don Lemon has the inside scoop or whoever it is, you know. And I think it used to be that those guys would spend 20 or 30 years traveling and then they'd get the cushy job behind the glass desk in the studio. Mm. Now it seems like you can go straight to the cushy job behind the glass desk. You know? Well, we just need someone who's relatable who can read a teleprompter, you know, who fits the profile that they're looking for, whether yeah. it's Fox News or CNN, you know. And also the information is there. You know, there are fantastic documentaries, articles being written about all of these conflicts. Right. People aren't reading them.
Well, with something like Venezuela, the the real problem is you have two sides. You have two different versions of what's happening. And it's if you're if you're not educated in that country and you don't understand their politics, it's very difficult to figure out who's telling the truth. Yeah. Same with Syria. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let's find one that we disagree on. Do right. you, I think you believe the official story of the JFK assassination, do you? More or less, yes. More or less. Yeah. My belief, and this is um, this uh, changes over time, I think that Lee Harvey Oswald was in on it. I think he was a part of it, but I think there were multiple people that were in on it. That's what I believe. Do you think there are multiple shooters? Yes. And the, one of the reasons why I believe that is because of the formation of the single bullet theory. And the single bullet theory was formed because the fact that they had to account for one bullet that hit the underpass, ricocheted off, and put some man in the hospital. Um, and that before that, they did not have an explanation for why all of these bullets, bullet holes, all these wounds were in all these different people's bodies. The other reason why I'm inclined to believe there's a conspiracy was the fact that they found that bullet on Connolly's gurney when right. they brought him into the hospital. It's too convenient, and the bullet itself is fairly pristine. Now, knowing as much as I know about bullets from personal experience of hunting, you can't hit anything with a bullet. I pulled a lot of bullets out of animals. When you shoot an animal and you hit bone, those bullets, they distort b b brutally. I mean, they don't look like that after they go through two people and hit all sorts of bone. That's the bullet that came out of Connolly's mm -hmm. body, or well, Connolly's gurney, excuse me. And that's the bullet that they're attributing to this uh, single bullet theory. Uh, if you look at the path of the bullet that goes through Connolly, or goes through Kennedy, and then goes through Connolly, that to me is, m is not unbelievable. It's well, not unbelievable. That one is. But you got to look at the other one. But the even that one. But no, no. See what I'm saying? Even that one is not unbelievable. It is believable to me because I know that bullets do strange things when they hit things. Right. But you, you got to combine that with the fact that the bullet came out fairly pristine, which means it didn't actually go through a kind of a, a bouncy path like that. Right. It well, went through a straight path. This diagram is from uh, a yeah. conspiracy theory. Yes. Yeah, essentially. Yes. Uh, but the there, thing there are is, other diagrams that will show the actual path with him. Like you know, they've got them the butts there on the same level, and you know that uh, Kennedy was actually sitting. He above was elevated. Conley. Yes. So um, see if we can find one that has uh, the actual seating arrangement or more accurate seating. Well, the one right there with the red line in the right hand side, the one on the right hand side. That's a more accurate um, from above. Yeah. Yeah. From above. Yeah. There's there's also the the fact that there was particles. There was more metallic particles from the bullets, more fragments from the bullet in Connolly's body than were missing from the bullet. I do not believe that was the bullet, and I think that that is a very reasonable assumption. Well, you know what you should do? You should uh, get one of those guns, get the same bullets, get some ballistic dummies with some bones inside and start shooting. They've already done that. Yeah. They've, Penn and Teller did that. Yeah, but some people have done it, and they have found pretty close to what actually happened. No, they didn't. Within, within the round. No, round of... no. Every bullet that hit bone got distorted. That's just what happens. The, the, you, when you shoot those bullets into water, or you shoot those bullets into like fluff or something like that that doesn't have a, a lot of uh, impact to slow the bullet down, mm -hmm. then you get a bullet that looks like that. If you shoot a bullet into bone, they distort wildly. But the bone was the last thing that it hit. But it doesn't matter. It's still hitting bone. But it stopped at that point. Yeah, but I mean, didn't it hit bone in, in Kennedy's body as well? Mm, went through his neck, didn't it? So, uh... The odds of it hitting only soft tissue, and it's going to go through his neck, and it came out here, that yeah. it didn't clip one of his vertebrae or something like that, I don't think that's real. Yeah. I think also there's a difference between, and this is a fact, from David Lifton's book, Best Evidence, which was uh, a book by uh, an accountant who went over um, the Warren Commission report and found all these factual inaccuracies and all these um, uh, contradictions. He found that there was a difference in the autopsy report at Bethesda, Maryland, the Bethesda Naval Hospital, versus the, uh, the sh what they had reported on the scene in Dallas. The first doctors that got a hold of Kennedy's body in Dallas before they flew him to Bethesda said that the hole in his neck was an entry wound. When they got to Maryland, they changed that to a tracheotomy hole. They changed the the impact, and they said that it was. Uh, they said that this was not an impact from a bullet; that it was from something else. 
Yeah, someone said they enlarged the hole to yeah. insert a trach tube. Yeah, well, I think, well, there was, a, there was also a lot of pressure on these people to try to wrap this up nice and tight and say that Lee Harvey Oswald was the shooter. There was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's this big thing about the CIA, the CIA inventing the, uh, no, the, the FBI? The FBI, well, inventing the term conspiracy theory was a CIA thing. I think it was the CIA. Yeah, and this was uh, a couple of years after the assassination. They, uh, there was a memo that went out where they were concerned about all these conspiracy theories that were coming out, and they used the term conspiracy theories, and then they, they said they should try to uh, basically debunk them and yeah, make the people who uh, spread them around look like... Uh, conspiracy theorists right, basically right. so the, the theory is that the term conspiracy theory came from uh that particular memo this goes into it actually the evolution of human consciousness and terence mckenna was a good friend of mine i love terence i especially loved him the last five years of his life because he made fun of himself so much terence um uh, people took terence way too seriously in many levels but as his brother dennis uh, which I think has been on your show a couple times. Yeah, Dennis is a great, Love that guy. great ally, great scientist. But you know, Dennis said even if ten percent of what Terence said was true, it's it's friggin' amazing. It's, and Terence and Dennis both came up with a stain, stoned ape theory. Now it's not a theory; it's a hypothesis. A hypothesis is speculative, uh, but cannot necessarily be as not yet proven. A theory is a hypothesis that has been tested and proven with facts. So I disagree with them in saying it's not a theory, it's a hypothesis. But the hypothesis of the stone ape, uh, 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 of the stone ape which I think you've alluded to before, is that with climate change and as the savannas increase and our primate ancestors came out of the, uh, out of the forest canopies, they're, they're tracking across the savannah. And if you're a hunter, what do you look? You look for footsteps and you look for scat. Uh, and the most significant fleshy mushroom going out of poop in, in Africa, hippopotamus, elephant, you know, uh, deer, antelope, etc., cetera, um, is Slossoby cubensis. It's a very large mushroom. You're hungry. You're with your clan. You consume it. And then 20 minutes later, you're, you're are catapulted in this extraordinary experience. Psilocybin substitutes as serotonin, becomes a better neurotransmitter, activates neurogenesis, it causes new neurons to form, new pathways of knowledge. So that's a stone date hypothesis, and it speaks to a mystery that the human brain, uh, basically the brain cavity doubled in size in about 2 million years. Some people say it's less, as two, uh, less than 200,000. Homo sapiens less arrived- Less than 200,000 years? Yeah. Homo sapiens arrived uh, 200,000 to 300,000 years That's ago. That's a big gap, right? It's a, it's a big gap, well, the science is like that. So mm. you want, you know, to be scientifically accurate here, I need to show the, the extreme margins of what's been estimated. So if we accept 2 million years that the, and it's shown in the fossil record, this is true, the oldest Homo sapiens fossils are 300,000 years old now. Um, but we have a subtle, suddenly doubling of the human brain. Um, and with that, our language centers increased, our ability to prognosticate, to plan. Um, and there's no explanation for this uh, currently. And even though we may not be able to prove it, I ask people to suspend their disbelief for a second. Now think of this. Our primate ancestors are going across the savanna. They ingest these mushrooms as a clan. Massive input for anyone who's eaten these mushrooms. Huge amounts of data is coming in. Fractal patterns, geometrical you know, landscapes occur. Um, you have empathy. Uh, you have greater courage. You're fighting a saber-toothed saber, saber tiger. You know, one day you're, you have a fear of it. Uh, we know now from neurogenesis and the extension of the fear response that has been clinically proven, psilocybin allows you to reset and have different neurological pathways to respond to fear, overcoming the fear of condition response, potentially PTSD, and there's a lot of research on this currently. So, but this wouldn't happen one time with one hominid group. Wouldn't happen two times, ten times. 
It happened millions and millions and millions and millions of times over millions and millions of years. This leads to what I think is called, uh, it should be called epigenetic neurogenesis. We know that there is a regeneration of neurons. We know that soul substitutes the serotonin. It opens the floodgates of the senses. You have a lot more data coming in. And we know that you have the extinction of the, of the fear response. So if you're the leader of your clan, you've had this traumatic uh, event, either war or cataclysm from earthquakes, whatever the case may be, or encounter a saber-toothed tiger, whatever. If you're the leader of that clan and you can overcome your fear response, you have courage and you have empathy. Those are leadership skills. I think people didn't take note of it. People like to follow leaders who are courageous and yet kind, who they can trust. They'll have their best interests in mind. So I think this propelled, I think it's a lot, it's a very good explanation. It's an unprovable hypothesis. But now we're at a junction and, for the ne and we're ready for the next quantum leap in human consciousness. I think psilocybin should be looked upon as a nootropic vitamin. And there's a huge amount of interest in this. Johns Hopkins University, as you probably well know, uh, New York University, UCLA, elsewhere in Europe, there's major clinical studies that have been conducted in the past two years showing exactly what I'm saying about overcoming fear response, neurogenesis, overcoming PTSD. This is now medically uh, quite seriously considered and something that I think that we should explore under controlled settings. I'm not into partying uh, with psilocybin mushrooms. Damn. <laughs> You're I going can, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand the Ari urge. Shafir is going to be here in a, an hour and a half, and he's the creator of Shroom Fest. Uh -huh. He's going to be very upset with your idea that you shouldn't party with it. Well, I think there's greater benefit to well, yourself, I, I agree with yourself and, 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 and humanity. I think these are serious tools.